In Singapore, ancient rivers have been transformed. And the wild have moved in and adapted. But not all is calm in the city's waterways. When Mother Nature unleashes her fury, will these river locals survive? This is the watery, wild city. Water is found on every continent on the planet, covering 70% of the Earth's surface, vital for all life. But only 3% of it is fresh water. And countries have gone to incredible lengths to capture this precious resource. Singapore has no natural lakes. Instead, millions of litres of fresh water are stored in futuristic reservoir systems. Marina Bay, in the heart of the city, is the island's largest. Built in 2008, it dams five of Singapore's rivers to create a totally unique freshwater bay and a new habitat for some of the nation's most beloved wild locals. The smooth-coated otter. Once declared extinct in Singapore, this species is now a familiar sight in the city center. The man-made bay turned out to be the perfect otter home. But they're not the only otter pack who've adapted to Singapore's urbanized water landscape. In the botanic gardens, a family is making history. The first otters ever to breed in this World Heritage listed site. At just over four weeks old, the babies have begun to emerge from their fig tree den to discover their place in the family. Boss of the pack is mum. She tends to have her hands full, but still keeps an eye on everyone. Then there's Dad. He prefers to keep his eyes closed and is a little more chill. And three boisterous teenagers. Last year's kids, almost fully grown, but not ready to leave home just yet. Besides, they've got work to do. Everyone in an otter family is expected to help care for the newborns. And they need all the protection they can get. The gardens may seem peaceful, but that's only on the surface. A few meters from the den, a large lake and a sizable drop. Otter pups aren't natural born swimmers. A fall into the water could prove fatal. To survive, the pups will need to adapt to their unique surroundings and learn from their family how to navigate the urban world they've been born into. Singapore's 17 reservoirs are strategically built across the island. This is where the majority of the country's rainwater is stored. 
Many have been designed for recreational use, but also act as new habitats for the wild. In Western Singapore, Jurong Lake has recently been given a makeover. 90 hectares of wetlands, ponds, and pathways. And it's here that some of Singapore's largest river monsters roam. The Asian water monitor, the second biggest lizard in the world, capable of growing over three meters long and weighing up to 25 kilograms. Found throughout Southeast Asia, some of these reptiles in Singapore have swapped mangrove swamps for freshwater lakes. They excel at swimming. Limbs tucked firmly against the body, while a muscular tail propels it forward. Guided by its excellent senses of smell and sight, these hungry carnivores are always on the lookout for their next meal. And this one has spotted a potential feast. Otters are excellent hunters and these lizards are one of the smartest reptiles in the world. Here in Singapore, they've learned to stalk and scavenge leftovers. With the otters back on the hunt, it's time to move in for the scraps. But he's not the only river monster with the same plan. Usually solitary, these reptiles are extremely territorial. Intruders are ruthlessly dealt with. But the smell of leftover fish draws in more contenders. In a lizard battle, size always wins. But this warrior can't relax just yet. Another challenger makes a move. This one is not backing down. Finally, the intruder gives up. Combat in deep water can prove fatal. Better to live to fight another day. The city's new freshwater habitats provide just the right environment for adaptable creatures like the monitor lizard. But it's not always easy to survive here. Battles can scar for life. 
And he who rules the river today may be tomorrow's loser. Singapore's freshwater habitats are crucial for thousands of local water birds. Approximately 400 species call this island home. Over the years, many have adapted to a more urbanized water world. The white-breasted water hen is one of the most commonly seen, often with chicks in tow. But other water-dwelling birds are much rarer. The lesser whistling duck. There's estimated to be just 50 of them in Singapore. But today, that number has increased by six. Hatched just a few days ago, these tiny ducklings, around the size of a golf ball, have already taken to the water. A man-made pond has turned out to be the perfect duckling nursery. Unlike otter pups, these babies enter the world with plenty of natural skills. They're already walking and swimming, while mum and dad carefully keep guard. No one is allowed near their rare brood. And for good reason, the ducklings can't fly yet and are totally defenseless against would-be predators. The first few weeks of their lives are crucial, and mum and dad will take on chaperone duties to give them the best chance of survival. Morning in Singapore. And at the Botanic Gardens, most of the local residents are busy grabbing breakfast. The otter teens soak up time away from their demanding siblings. Meanwhile, mum is exhausted. The growing pups need to be fed every few hours. A job only she can do. But this morning, there's more than milk on the menu for these babies. Otter Swimming School is about to begin. The nearby Swan Lake is the perfect beginner's pool. Getting all the pups to the edge is the first step. It takes some persuading. The teens show them how it's done. Diving is an urban adaptation this family have pioneered. But the pups aren't so keen. Mum coaxes one in. And grabs a few more. But the pups can't swim yet. Their older siblings act as lifeguards, keeping them afloat while they get used to the water. Now, Mum begins her swimming lesson. Each pup is dragged around and encouraged to start kicking. She's an excellent coach, and under her guidance, the babies get used to their new water world. Mm -hmm. 
When a pup gets tired, it's carried out and swapped for a fresh one. Everyone gets a turn, even if they're not quite ready. But all these students are a lot for this small family to watch over, especially when Dad has been distracted by an early lunch. His fishy meal attracts the attention of a river monster. With no leftovers to grab, the lizard spots a new target. These huge reptiles have been known to attack otter pups. The family must get all their babies out of the lake and fast. Mum is the only one experienced enough who can jump with a baby on board. She works tirelessly until there's just one pup left. Something else has caught the lizard's eye. A scavenger's jackpot. Just the diversion Mum needs. The lizard can hardly believe her luck. But she'll have to be quick. Competition is already on the way. This huge fish, almost a quarter her size, makes for a slow getaway. Now to enjoy her prize. There's not much chewing involved at a lizard's dinner table. Chunks are swallowed whole, and she'll devour the entire carcass. Nothing is wasted by this vulture of the reptile world. Safely back at the den, the pups are busy getting dry. They'll have to get used to the lake's big drop. Smooth-coated otters must have access to fresh water to survive. The rest of the city's waterways are already ruled by other otter packs. So for now, the Botanic Gardens is the only place this family can call home. Over the last few hundred years, Singapore's water landscape has drastically changed. Entirely new ecosystems have formed. And some strange creatures have moved in. The red-eared slider. Hailing from North America, these large turtles have found the perfect home in the nation's calm lakes and rivers. But it's not just fresh water that they need in order to survive. On the banks of this pond, a turtle gathering. Here, there's no social distancing. All they care about is getting the best spot in the sun. Cold-blooded, they must sunbathe regularly. A large shell absorbs heat and warms the body. But this process takes time. 
It helps to get as much skin out as possible. The Superman pose. A turtle's way to warm the legs. Stacking is another method to heat yourself up. It's just like sitting on top of a radiator. Hours each day are dedicated to sunbathing. But while the turtles here have plenty of space, their cousins on the Singapore River aren't so lucky. The city's most urbanized waterway is just over three kilometers long. Once heavily polluted, the river is now clean enough for a family of otters to call it home. Here, they've adapted, figuring out unique ways in and out of the water. For their turtle neighbors, however, it hasn't been so easy. Hemmed in by vertical walls, the only dry land in sight, a rubbish catcher. Not the most luxurious place to sunbathe, but cold turtle beggars can't be choosers. Long claws and a desperation to get warm inspire a climb. Not everyone makes it on the first attempt. If at first you don't succeed, try and try again. Persistence eventually pays off. Finally, time to get warm. With such limited space, it's every turtle for itself. Some will do whatever it takes to make more room. Others just get a bit frustrated. These pioneering urbanites are considered an invasive species in Singapore. Unwanted pets released into the waterways. Little is known of their impact on the native wildlife. But for now, they remain part of the city's watery world. On the other side of the island, one of Singapore's most common locals, the long-tailed macaque. Usually spotted in the forests, this troop have adapted to a life on the water's edge. Here, concrete dams millions of litres of fresh water to form McRitchie Reservoir. Constructed over 150 years ago and surrounded by rainforest, this is Singapore's oldest water catchment area. place to retreat to and soak up the green. Along the banks, a recent downpour has encouraged new grass shoots to sprout. A chance for the monkeys to add some fiber to their regular fruity diet. peaceful family picnic. These monkeys live in tight-knit groups. Everyone knows their place. The alpha male is in charge and reigns over his harem of females and offspring. Babies are easy to handle. The mums do all the work anyways. It's the teenagers that can get up to mischief. At the troop's regular drinking hole, a visitor 
is causing a few problems. Everyone is thirsty, but the teenagers are a little scared. A turtle about half their size has moved in. The alpha male will have to show them how it's done. Inspired by Dad's example, the youngsters are finally brave enough to head in for a drink. And a little fun. Macaques are excellent swimmers, but they're very safety conscious. If there's something in the water they're not sure about, they won't risk getting their toes nipped. And the teenagers have just spotted another turtle. This one's even bigger. Swimming will just have to wait until the watery visitors have moved on. Over the last few hundred years, Singapore's waterways have been highly modified. 8,000 kilometers of drains and canals have been built. Just about every river and stream redesigned and redirected. But 200 years ago, the island's water landscape looked very different. Rivers snaked their way through dense mangrove and out to sea. A timeless place between land and ocean where fresh and salt water met. Small pockets of these mangroves still survive today. And here, the wild live as they always have. Including a unique creature, the tree-climbing crab. At least three species call Singapore home. All live by the tides. When the water is low, it's feeding time. Crabs are surprisingly dexterous. Their claws, an ultimate multi-tool. But this is lunch on the clock. When the tide comes in, the crabs must climb. Now, the claws are used like pickaxes, designed to grip onto even the most slippery tree trunk. Up here, it can get a little crowded. Everyone has the same plan, get up high and escape aquatic predators. The water can rise to over three meters Quite a height for a teacup-sized crab to climb. Now safely away from danger, they await the next tidal shift. These surviving mangrove forests in Singapore are a vital habitat for hundreds of species of animals and plants. A crucial part of the nation's water story and a reminder of how the island's water landscape once looked. In the botanic gardens, the young otter family have just moved house. A more urban den complete with a fancy front lawn. 
perfect for a bit of pampering time. Smooth-coated otters have two layers of thick hair that need to be kept in tip-top condition, especially the outer waterproof fur. But it can be hard to reach every part of the body. Grooming each other is a way to bond. And the pups, now eight weeks old, are keen to join in. But they're also easily distracted and dying to explore their garden home. Mum leads the family across the gardens and over to a small pond, the perfect place for toddlers. Over the last few weeks, the pups have mastered the art of swimming. Today, it's time for their next lesson. Packed with tiny fish, the shallow water is ideal for beginner hunters. Working in unison, the adults show off their skills. Teamwork is the best way to make a catch. The fish here are just the right size for a little pup. But they're too small to stand up and eat like the adults. Mum must once again get them out. One at a time. Finally, the youngsters get a taste of the morning's hard work. The otters only catch tiny fish like this now, so the pups can learn to eat and practice using their front paws. In just a few months, they'll move on to much bigger fry. But in the meantime, this is quite the mouthful for a beginner. As the sun sets across Singapore, the city is transformed. Most of the waterway's creatures get some rest. A comfy ledge under a city bridge is this family's bedroom. Others prefer to stay close to the water. Whilst above them, river monsters stretch out and blend in. But not everyone is asleep in the city. One creature is just waking up. The golden apple snail. Around the size of a golf ball, these mollusks live in calm freshwater ponds. Specialized gills mean they can breathe underwater. After a day of resting, the snails are ravenous. Long tentacles compensate for their terrible eyesight. They feel their way around the pond, searching for food. Mostly vegetarian, a plant like this is irresistible. A special jaw and a row of renewable teeth make short work of this underwater salad. The night is spent happily grazing. Except for the females. They have another job. Just above the water, this one is busy 
creating a masterpiece. Her contorted body forms a slimy conveyor belt as she deposits hundreds of rice grain sized eggs. Each one, carefully aimed, slides into place. It takes hours to build this teaspoon sized mound. In the darkness, she's safe against daytime predators. But before the night ends, she must return to her watery world. In the light of day, all that remains of the snail's existence are splodges of pink. The eggs will hatch in 14 days and join their parents in the water below. Originally from South America, thousands of these snails now live in Singapore in just about every freshwater habitat in the country. On the pond in the city, the ducklings are now just over a week old. So far, they've all survived. But one of the biggest challenges for a duckling is keeping their soft downy feathers dry. Unlike the adults, their feathers aren't fully waterproof yet and can't get too waterlogged. Mum and Dad have been dedicated parents. But there's nothing they can do about the weather. If the ducklings get drenched, their body temperature will drop quickly and hypothermia can lead to death. The race is on for the family to seek refuge. In tropical Singapore, it usually rains every few days. Eight hundred million litres of water can pour down in just a few hours. Enough to fill over 300 Olympic-sized swimming pools. Just about every part of the city has been designed to capture this precious resource. Smaller concrete drains channel the water into larger canals and onward to the reservoirs. For some, this deluge has little impact on their lives. But others must take shelter. Rain, vital for life here, can turn threatening in an instant. The duck family scramble to find cover. But in the chaos, two of the babies go missing. Duckling's feathers aren't fully waterproof. If they get drenched, they could perish from hypothermia. But with no shelter in sight, all mum can do is use her own body as a shield to try and protect the remaining four ducklings.
after the storm, the pond quickly heats up again and life returns to normal for some. Unfortunately, not everyone survived the ordeal. But thanks to mum, the rest of the brood are alive and will hopefully continue to grow bigger and stronger every day. This urban pond is a surprising habitat choice for the shy, lesser whistling duck. But by creating the right freshwater environment, the city has proven it can attract rare species such as these. Singapore's 31 rivers were once the main source of fresh water. Now almost every single one of them has been highly modified. Kalang River, the longest, flows 10 kilometers from the heart of the country into Marina Bay. Many of the city's canals have been designed to channel precious fresh water into this river as it winds its way through an urban jungle and a concrete world. But recently, the upper part of the Kalang River has been rejuvenated. Bishan Angmo Kyo Park is now 62 hectares of lush green and three kilometers of meandering fresh water. Rare migrant birds such as the Asian open-billed stork, have begun to make stopovers here. On the ground, a huge diversity of plants fringe the waterways. And the river is teeming with fish. Perfect for a large pack of wily hunters. This family moved into the park a few years ago, and in the narrow river, they've refined their hunting tactics. Working as a team, they corral the fish into the shallows. A show-stopping performance. These otters have a large fan club here in one of the most successfully rejuvenated rivers in the country. But it's not just the otters who have found a home here. Other water-loving wildlife have also moved in. Some so small that they go completely unnoticed. 120 species of dragonflies and damselflies can be found flitting around the Kama waterways. And below them, one of the most evolved creatures in the world, the pond skater. This tiny insect, around the size of a fingernail, literally walks on water. The entire body is covered with thousands of minuscule hairs that trap air to repel water. It can cover almost two meters in a second and is always on the lookout for a meal. Anything that falls into their realm is hunted down. A dragonfly, excellent eating. These insects are just one of many small creatures that make a home in Singapore's freshwater habitats. Tiny, but no less important for this ecosystem. A few months have passed, and in the botanic gardens, the otter pups are now six months old. but only the strongest two made it. 
survival rates are low for this species, and with only around 90 of them in Singapore, smooth-coated otters are still critically endangered here. The two pups are now the teenagers of the family. Finally big enough to fend for themselves. In the city pond, the ducklings are also almost fully grown. And like the otter pups, only two managed to survive the first few vulnerable months of life. But now, they have waterproof feathers and wings that are nearly ready to take flight and explore their unique city home. In the next four decades, 90% of Singapore's land will be part of an interconnected water catchment system. Channeling fresh water into rivers, lakes and reservoirs. A life-giving resource for us and the wild. Freshwater ecosystems will constantly evolve. Many of our wild river locals will continue to adapt and thrive here in the wild city.